Will you please welcome the fabulous Emma Thompson? <laughs> Thompson here with us. Emma, you are so welcome. It's lovely to have you back. And you, yeah, you do look great. Thanks very much. The wolf whistle. You do look fabulous. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Much appreciated. I imagine that is not on a diet of giant Scotch eggs and cheese. No. What's got into you, Jonathan? What do you mean? It's a very strange beginning to the show, Giant Snacks. I don't know. It Where was did in the that news. Come from? We thought people might enjoy seeing a giant Scotch egg on the show. <laughs> it is. It was fascinating in many, many ways. Would you like a nibble? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, it's, it did taste like a Scotch Did you train that fly up? It, what, an incredible, what an incredible thing. Yes. I, I, I'm just irresistible to uh, pests. But I was... I, I just thought the lights and everything would put it off. You know, and the audience. He's a student. There was no shame, there was no sort of sense of nerves no or nerves. anything. It was just totally calmly walking around on the table. I think I think they come in from Alan Titchmarsh's studio next door. <laughs> yes. here's a, yeah. Here's a lot of animals in there like that. Uh, well, welcome to the show, Emma Thompson. You. You're Thank sitting you. in there with uh, Professor Brian Cox, one of the uh, the smartest men in the country. That's fair enough, Brian. Do you not think? I know you don't want to big yourself up, but that's fair enough. That is correct, Jonathan. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I take it back, you do want to big yourself up. Um, <laughs> do you, did you learn anything? And, did you have a chat with him? Were you talking yes, about Yes, because these? he's just been two miles down to the bottom of the sea in a sort of cigar holder, it sounded like. So three of you all tightly packed in together. I, don't, I think that would be frightening. I and saw all those weird... I mean, fish much like the objects you've got. Like the, the fish with the big you. light on the head, on the <laughs> thing like that, to trick yeah. other fish, that kind of thing. See, I know a bit about it. I so don't think I could do that. I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, were you good at school? Did you like science or practical subjects like at school? No, or were I you more arty? science, absolutely. <laughs> Awful. Did but then I had a physics teacher I didn't really like. Does anybody remember the oil drop experiment? The oil drop? Yes. Well, you had to measure an oil drop by dropping a drop of oil onto a great big sheet of... Yeah, that was the only fun bit, because you could just shower the whole place with oil and water and slide up and down the, the laboratory. But you that weren't one for fun. the equations or the mathematics? No, I'm, I'm rubbish. I'm rubbish. So when Guy brings her maths homework back, I'm just... Ooh, I love Suddenly I go fantastically blonde and... It's got harder than it used to be. Because as Guy is your daughter, she's, what, she's 10, 10 now, 11? She's 10 years old now. Yes. Uh, and so does she, is she showing uh, an aptitude in those areas that you didn't have then? She's better at it than me, yes. And what but do you... that's not... Tricky. No. <laughs> I find it really hard helping with the homework. Yeah. <laughs> that for you now. He's on your hair right now. Look, I have got, I've got... Is he there? Is He's he on there? Your head. He is on your head right there. <laughs> so weird. Well, should we need to get rid of this fly? I think, no, I don't think you should. I think he should be allowed to appear on the rest of the show. <laughs> because I do honestly think that there's something about it. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> What, what, what if it... <laughs> He's right in there now. Perhaps if I... Know, that, a... that looks like the biggest nit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> is he still there? He's right... Go on, go on, is he? He's, he's making a nest. That's... Come here, come here. You know get... he's got stuck to my hairspray. I've got a ton of El Net on here. He probably can't get off. He, they like the hairspray, they like that. He's gone now, temporarily, but he's over there. I suspect he'll be back later on. <laughs> We'll have to give him a billing. Um, <laughs> so, what do you think, Gaia? So, your daughter, what, is she going to follow in your footsteps? Is she? Uh, did you show uh, acting skills at that age? Were you interested in drama? Is she following you in that respect? No, no, I wasn't interested in drama. I, I, no, not at all. I wanted to be a hospital administrator <laughs> because um, a lady came to our school once to talk about a hospital administrator. She had a very nice pair of shoes on, and I thought, oh. <laughs> That's quite an interesting job. Perhaps I'll try for that. And Guy is aiming high and low at the same time because she wants to be an, um, um, a waitress and an artist. A waitress and yes, an artist. Yes, that's her goal. But you know so what? It's good because it's like one will presumably support the other. Yeah, if you're normally, if you're an artist or any kind of form, you need to have you something have to fall to, back on. Have, like, yeah, you? and I have asked her because she's done extra work. She's, she was an extra in The New Nanny and she was an extra in Last Chance Harvey. And I said, you know, do you want to, do you want to act? And she said, Mum, look... If, obviously, if you need me at any point, <laughs> I'm willing to come along and help. But, you know, as a job... Yeah. <laughs> that was the thing. I thought, OK, 
because it's uh, you're a very close family, aren't you? you it's yeah. not just the, the younger generation, but also your mum lives in the same street as you. Yeah, Lisa. she lives opposite. That's uh, in the street opposite. That, that and that must be a lovely setup. That's great it having. Is. That, how nice. It and is lovely. Do you, you presumably you have keys to each other's doors, that kind of thing. Yes, yes, absolutely. Is there? A, does she have to knock or cough before she comes in in case? Yeah, we're shagging in the front room yeah. or something. <laughs> um, that actually hasn't happened, but we've been together for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and after a while, you just sort of think, do you know what? Bed's actually the, really the most comfortable place. Yeah. You know? Let's leave the kitchen table for now because it's uh, all oh, slightly sore yeah. on the old. Oh, okay, never mind. You don't you know, do that. So no. no uh, but it's, well, it's, it's what a lovely close family, a close family network, and what a nice thing for you to rely on to have around you. Yeah, it's oh. it's great. It's great. Mum mum tends to put Guy to bed at night and everything. So we've got it's very nice. So we've got three generations lying in the bed, all reading peanuts cartoons. Oh, that's sweet. It's nice. Um, let me ask you about Nanny McPhee. It's not and is it and the Big Bang or just and, the Big Bang? And, and the Big and Bang. The Big Bang. Mm. Okay. Here's a role which you kind of created for yourself. I know they were based on uh, books that you loved as a child, but you you wrote the screenplay, the first one and this one. Mm. Uh, you created for yourself. Was it fun getting back into that character, getting uglied up again or ugly down again, whatever you would say for that role, going back into a role you you created on screen? Yeah, it was. I liked it. She's a very strange personality because when I'm in the full makeup and come on set, all the crew, you know, very sort of. Morning, Nanny McPhee. Morning, Nanny. You know, there's a, if there's a fag on, the fag goes out. You know, yes. the sandwich put around. Morning, Nanny McPhee. If I'm coming on just as me, you know, it's morning, Nanny, morning. She's got a very sort of powerful, baleful person presence. Were you worried that the second film might not live up to the first one? Because the first film was so. I, I really adored it, and you mm. know that. Uh, it's always difficult going back. It's always difficult making a sequel. Were you concerned? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I thought I could make it better. I thought I could. I'd learnt so much from the first one. I thought this next one should be, it should be tighter, it should be more, and I'm really pleased with it, actually. Great people to have in the film with you. I, I'm assuming that they want to work with you, they know who you are, but when you make a call to someone like Oyster Fans, who you wouldn't necessarily think will be in a movie like this, no. and then when you see him, and it was a surprise to me to see him in it, it was a yeah. very welcome surprise, uh, that must be uh, exciting that they want to do this kind of project with you. Yeah, but particularly Reese and Bill Bailey, because they're so rock and roll, you yeah, know. Yeah. But they, they love the script, so... Bill That's... doesn't look very rock and roll there, I'll admit. There was a responsible... I know. Oh, God, I worship him. It was very difficult He's... having him on set, because every time he walked past, I just threw myself to the ground in a spontaneous act of worship. <laughs> you know? Bill, I love you! He, well, he is a, a brilliant, funny man. There he looks like he's more worried about the new tracks on Cider, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, why did you set it in a different period? Because the first one is when? Is it Edwardian period? Is it yeah, around Edwardian times, because I, want I wanted a completely new story. I worked out while I was doing the publicity for this one that actually um, it's a Western. When I was little, I used to love watching... Do you remember The Virginian and High Chaparral yeah. and all that lot with my dad? And we used to love watching these things. And I suddenly realised that I identified with those characters and with Clint Eastwood and yeah. with, you know, Shane, all that lot. And Nanny McPhee is exactly that. She comes in to a situation, stranger from outside. You don't know where they've come from. They sort it all out using unorthodox methods and then they either leave or die. That's absolutely it's right. a Western. Yeah. And so that, I, I realised that that's the form that's influenced me much more than the sort of bed knobs and broomsticks Mary Poppins types films. That's it was Western. I can see that yeah, she's like the nanny with no name. <laughs> exactly. Which is also a bit like Doctor Who in a way. That's the structure of Doctor Who. Each, exactly. each episode he appears and then he does stuff and then he goes away. Um, so let's have a look at a clip of Nanny McPhee, uh, and not just uh, you and Risa fans and some other great people, also uh, Katie Brand, who's fabulous in it. I oh, know, she who's, was on last night. She was great. Yeah. Who's the young actress in that with her? Sinead Matthews. Brilliant, they're brilliant. Fab. And what a weird... Uh, and you, you, this wasn't based on one of the Nanny books. This is no, all no, original. No, 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 this is all new. All so new. Where, now explain their characters, because that's a very strange, quite dark <laughs> element. Well, you know, during the, it's set during the Second World War, and... Um, during that war, as you know, women took over all the jobs that yeah. men couldn't do because they were away fighting. And I thought, well, if that's the case, then the black market must have been run by women as well. So all the heavies involved in that gambling side of things that all carried on while the war was on must have been done by the women. So Topsy and Turvy are just hench women and hit women, you know, taking over from where their husbands, stroke fathers, have left off. Yeah. Well, it's a brilliant uh, idea, and also it's great seeing it set in that period. It must have been exciting making it in, you know, the Second World War period because there's so much going on, but also the clothes look so great, the yeah. cars look so great. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at a clip. This is a clip of Emma Thompson in action in the new Nanny McPhee and the Big Bang. <laughs> Not a real elephant, though. No. no. But beautiful. No, it's a lovely, fun family movie. I went to see my kids, and even though my kids are getting a bit older, they still enjoyed it, you know, yeah. because it's got a, it's a lot of quiet... It's not adult humour, but it's quite grown up. It's quite sophisticated humour. Right? Well, 
Well, you know, it's really a homage to my dad and to the magic roundabout and to the fact that, you know, he'd include in these tiny little cartoons for kids, phrases like hoist with your own petard, you know, and get letters from mothers saying, how dare you use phrases like that in the thing for children? They're never going to understand it. And he'd say, but why would you write differently for children? They're just people who haven't lived as long as we have. What's the point of talking down to them and... Um, designing something that isn't, isn't something that's going to please you. I have to write something that makes me laugh, that I like, and then hope that everyone else is going to like it. Well, I think they will. Um, your, uh, Emma, just in case you're wondering, is a married woman. Yes. She's spoken for. It's a very handsome and talented young actor, Greg, Greg Wise. There they are together. Who I noticed he's going quite silvery on top now. Yes. But looking he very, is. Dis very he distinguished. Went white, quite, he, he went white quite young, which he insists is as a result of living with me. Um, <laughs> but actually, is genetic, I believe, because his father did the same thing. Did you meet? You met on a film set, didn't you? Did you meet on Sense and Sensibility? Sense and Sensibility. We did. And is it true that you were? It was predicted that you were told in advance that you would meet your no, partner. No, what happened was Greg had a mate who was a bit witchy, you know, and looked in and looked into whatever she looked into, yeah. some crystal ball or other, and said, "You are going to meet your future partner on this film." So he came on set, all very excited, looking around, think, "Well, who's free?" You know, and it was Winslet, of course. Kate Winslet. So he assiduously <laughs> courted Winslet for weeks on end, taking her to Glastonbury shop. She was really didn't take to it at all because she's a modern and he's a hippie. Yeah, yeah, you know, he yeah. was like, oh, look, these crystals are really interesting, aren't they? And she's going, oh, oh, God, where's the nearest pub? Um, <laughs> so it didn't work at all. And, um, and then it turned out to be me. How nice. That's Weird. lovely, though, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It's but lovely. you want to watch out, she's back on the market, so maybe you'll go have another crack at it. <laughs> 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 we shouldn't really laugh at no. that. Shouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I laugh? Huge laugh. Well, oh, honestly, so uh, well, shame. Hey, uh, so nice to see you again. You too. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Emma Thompson. Hi, darling. I'll see you. Oh, oh, no, no, no. The um, hi, darling. The, the book. I've got the book. Okay. Emma Thompson, ladies and gentlemen.